My name is Christine Moriello, and I've been sharing for the last four and a half years my experience with PNES and then the process and steps it took to overcome PNES. In my journey and my walk, I found that the cause, the root cause of PNES was that I had untreated and undiagnosed, or at least anciently diagnosed, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. So I want to share a little bit and go a little bit off script from normal tips and tools that I, I share with you and offer some information about really get to the heart of what this journey looks like from the inside. From the inside of this journey, it's a very vulnerable place. Many of us, when we start this journey of discovery of PNES, we don't have a support system or a limited support system. And so the very act of what has to happen, this upheaval of the things that we have spent a lot of time pushing down, ignoring, maybe just not even acknowledging. We have to let that come up and it's kind of like a volcano sometimes. For me it was at least. And it was good and it was hard and it was painful And it doesn't mean that I can't offer you hope just because it's painful. The hope I get to offer you is realistic hope. So here's my story to date. Approximately five years ago, uh, it was January 2014, I was diagnosed in the hospital after being admitted for four days with PNES. That was the final diagnosis after running a, a gamut of tests to rule out anything else that could be causing seizures. My seizures were pretty severe. They were six to eight on average per day and they mimicked what is known in the epilepsy world as grand mal seizures. Now they weren't grand mal seizures, but that didn't mean my body wasn't performing what looked like, what felt like, what disrupted my life like a grand mal seizure. So at that time, after being discharged in the hospital, I recognized the fact that stress, that events, that people I had been allowing in my life, circumstances that I didn't stand up for myself with, there were so many things. There was a litany of reasons why PNES erupted on the spot. And there is only one cure, so to speak. The one cure was that I had to go through a lot of healing. If you have PNES and the root of it stems from woundedness, and that might take you a little bit to get to, and that's okay. This is my journey, that's your journey. For me, the root of it was woundedness, which meant a lot of going back and revisiting it, seeing what bad stuff, what pollutants maybe I picked up in my life because of that woundedness, because of that event. And I refer to them as lies. Something happened to me as a child, and I would say, it happened because I was a bad kid. There's something wrong with me. I wasn't loved by God. I wasn't loved by my parents. I wasn't loved by, and that all went back on me. Why did these things happen? And I internalized the fault to fall on me. These things happened because of some defect in who I am and that hurt. And I recognized when I had a true north, which is the Bible, that that is not true at all. 
that yes, there are many things wrong with humans. Don't get me wrong on that. But as I came to know my true identity and the one who redeemed my life, Jesus, the things that I believed about myself were no longer true if what happened actually happened. If my life was really redeemed, if he really did die on the cross for my sins, if he intended and had a good plan for my life, then I had to go through all these events where there were deep-seated, deep-rooted lies that my foundation was built on. The truth is that a very wounded and messed up in the head man hurt me as a child, not because I was a bad child or because I deserved it, but because there was something wrong inside of him that made him think it was okay to do that to a child. The truth was that my parents did not know about this, that my family could not comprehend why I was acting out as frequently and as violently as I was as a child. And because they were missing this very important instrumental piece of information, they treated it like any other disobedience. The truth was that growing up, I lost my identity because of these previous wounds. And I carried around fears, fears of rejection, fears of abandonment. And that colored every decision that I made as an adult and coming into adulthood. I allowed more people into my life who caused more harm. Again, not because I was wrong, not because there was something wrong with me, within me, but because Two broken people don't make a whole person. <laughs> I surrounded myself with a tribe of people of brokenness, of misidentity. People in that kind of tribe who don't know who they are, don't know what it's like to, to behave in a respectful, honest way. And when you don't know who you are, you don't know what it's like to behave like yourself. Growing up was difficult. Wound upon wound, self-inflicted, other people inflicted, circumstance inflicted, but there's a lot of woundedness, a lot of hurt that went with all these years and days and months and seasons. Why do I share this with you? I've overcome this. And I can't help wondering, would I still be in the same position if I didn't share my experience with you? If I didn't share the hope of overcoming this with you? I don't think I would be the person I am today if I didn't use what it is that I have learned and have loved in my life now with people who are searching, the same type of people that I resonate with. When I was first diagnosed and threw out, I looked for people I could identify with. And not just people who had PNAS, but people who had hope. I needed that hope. I didn't find it online. I didn't find it in doctor's offices. I didn't find it in the psychiatrist's office or the therapist's office. I did find it though. And I found it in my creator. I found it in my identity. My story is my testimony. I found who I was and who I was to become in the arms of a loving God. I became the person I am through constant nurturing and love from that same God who found me that day. Found me in pain and brokenness.
the same loving God I was convinced wanted nothing to do with me. Because if you knew who I was back then, if you knew the magnitude of the mistakes I had made, if you knew the litany of people that I had hurt in my life, if you knew how many times that I tried to escape this life and kill the same body that he so lovingly cherished and brought back to health and restored. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if you have an impression of God like that, like I did. The God that I knew rejected me. And I would at some point even go as far as saying that I was certain, certain that he hated me. And I was wrong. I was wrong about a whole bunch of things. That was my favorite wrong thing. If it is your desire to be free from baggage, from pain, from a host of problems that have followed you all through your life, of patterns that you can't explain, I offer you this and nothing else. I offer you hope, the only hope that I can offer is in the fact that we could be wrong. We might just be wrong. And who loves us? We might just be wrong that our life has a purpose, an important purpose. We might just be wrong that there is an overcoming and a day where we aren't suffering the way we suffer in that moment. We might just be wrong that our, there are more tomorrows than maybe in this moment you'd hope for. I offer you hope, the only hope that I can offer you. And it lies in the truth what if you're wrong? Can you wonder on that a little bit? Can you maybe list out what you think of God? What you think of life? And maybe wonder, what if I'm wrong? What if this isn't the end, but the beginning? What if this isn't the worst possible thing that could happen to me. But what if this is a catalyst for something great?